about to get your picture taken loose up. <laughs> 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 I don't do reality TV like that. You're distracting me. R O M N I E K I. Oops. <laughs> Has anybody seen um, Fantasia lately? She looked good. Who is her new stylist? I need to know. Jesus is not going to accept ratchetness at the end of the day. Unfortunately, my, my favorite daughter is Tracy. <laughs> This is the definition of a real mom. I'm here working and I got my son. I mean, people handle, they have, they can't, wow, my goodness. Like, you might have like a you job know, where you put 40 something hours in every day. That's crazy, but you have 24 hours in a day. Well, you can work 40 hours a week, my fault. Yep, so that was the same. But what was my favorite show for 2011? Wait, what year we in? 2013. Snizzle! <laughs> cut, cut. What do I think about online dating? I Christian, never did it. Christian Mingles, uh, black people me. Black people me. I'm on all of that. Cold cuts. I'm lying. I'm about to be though. I'm about to make a profile tonight. But go ahead. Christian Mingle, my favorite commercial. My fa like that is my favorite commercial. Like really, that's a lot of pressure. This is the best that God has from you. So God is on the internet. Online dating is kind of. Kind of weird. It also depends on which one you go to because yeah, because blackpeoplemeet.com has a lot of white people. On. Yes, it does. A lot it of does. Of what do I think about online dating? What do you think about the Craigslist killer? <laughs> what do you think about being catfished? I've seen it work, but nowadays, like you have to be so careful. There's so many nuts out here. Like you know, everything seemed cool, and then. You know, they meet you and then they want to cut your neck off and, you know, all types of stuff. It could be somebody as sweet and kind as Mr. Rogers or somebody as crazy as Marilyn Manson. So you need to be ready for either end of the spectrum. How do you even know if that person is real? It's just like if they took Frank's picture and then they changed the name to like Escobar Espinoza. Oh, I like, like that. that I like that. That, that, was a, that was a good one. I think online dating can be a tool used to put the right people together. Everyone always says that person might not be who they say they were gonna be, but that happens in face-to-face -face meetings. I actually have a client who just got married last year. He met his wife online dating. I don't think it's cool that people judge people like, oh, you met them online? Like, who died and made you marry Poppins? Like, you can't judge anybody because you met your husband at the grocery store and he still cheats on you, so what's your point? I don't know. I never did it, and I, I don't have any plans on trying it. I'm sick of seeing that commercial though. That Christian, Christian Mingle. That's always on me. Over two million people. Man, it be them happy couple. Hey, I'm, very, I'm very fine guy. Match with me. I'm signing up tonight. Well, go ahead. It's always the same three couples. Like it's not even new couples. Like so, is it people not Christians or they just not mingling? Like I don't understand what's happening, and I just, I get so confused. When I was a teenager, I mean, everybody was on Black Planet and MySpace and all that other stuff. And of course, when the guys hit you up as a teenager, you're like, oh my God, this boy hit me up, blah, blah, blah. But that is not safe. For some reason, eHarmony and Christian Mingle just keep sending me emails. I'm a little work? scared because I watch Law and Order and yeah. stuff too much. And they always and be that killing people. Killer? Yes, they always mm -hmm. be chopping people up. I'm good. What if you meet her and she's not, this, she's not the person that, that, that was on the pick? Yeah, I mean, so, and then what you, now you stuck. So you need to video chat and see if that's really them. So when you see them in person, you will know, oh, hey, that's them. You need to see them with makeup and without makeup, with glasses, without <laughs> glasses, with a hat, without a hat. I just don't think it's safe. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it's fun. I think it's lazy. It's a cop out because you don't have to go through all the foolishness. You don't have to go through all the awkward moments when you're out. You don't have to worry about the first kiss. You don't have to do all that because you can talk about it and set it up. Instead of having that excitement and being enthused to see this person and seeing where it goes, you just rather get everything out online and deal with it. And that's 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 that's, that's the nutty way. You're, you're being a punk. I think that that is something that should have went out with Black Planet and MySpace and Tom. Hey, Tom. Social media is one of the greatest inventions created of the 21st century. People take 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter way too far. What people don't realize is that 99% of the time people are front fronting for a social network. Like nothing is what it looks like, nothing's what it seems. Everybody recreates themselves on social networks mm -hmm. and it's just ridiculous. I feel like you have another life in, in, in social networking. I mean, live live your life. Live the life that your that that your flesh is in. I mean, that your spirit is in. People get on there and pretend to be somebody else. Like you really have to be a low life. Like if you have this whole other life online, you're crazy. You're crazy. People create facades of themselves. You got fake people. All the new Jordans, but you walking though. When you put stuff on your personal, I mean, about your personal life, especially when it's, I guess, trying to make yourself look cool, you look like a fraud. I mean, if you really have it the way you have it, or if you're doing it the way you say you're doing it, you don't have to put it online. Nobody cares about what you have. It's not about what you have, it's what's in you. No. This is me, love me for me. If you don't love me, oh well, I don't be fishing for follows and likes, and I don't do that kind of stuff. What you see is what you get, period. Point blank, I'm not putting on a front, a show. There's a lot of Facebook gangsters, there's a lot of Facebook millionaires. Uh, Facebook celebrities, like everybody has this motive of, you know, they want it for attention. We do care too much about how the public sees us. The whole bathroom pics, everybody ain't a model, everybody ain't a photographer. Oh, speaking of bathroom pics, I <laughs> wish y'all girls would stop putting your butt <laughs> on, on that counter. Yes, that's please. not cute. Mm -hmm. For a site that is called Facebook, I believe a lot of people don't show their real face. It's like, a costume store. There's a lot of people on there you don't know, and they on there talking about how they was this, this, and this back in the day, and a real, like somebody who really knew you looking at you like you a clown. What happened to just originality and being you? And being happy, being yeah. you. Like and it's really funny because they allow people, or they friend people, or they follow people who actually know them. And I think it's just pretty hilarious to follow that person who you know is really not about that life. <laughs> like, that's not even you. Like, you was a square when we was in school. Like, don't like do not do that, because I know you. <laughs> okay? I know you. Like, stop doing that, and it's, it's real, it's corny. But I, I just can't keep myself from going on them every day. <laughs> it's so funny. Like. You don't really even get to enjoy life because you're so busy competing and look like looking like you're doing something. So, yeah. Social networks are like a gift and a curse. You know, it's great for businesses, like self-promotion, networking. But, you know, some people do use it for the wrong reasons. And doing hair looking crazy. That is just something for you to connect with people that you can like talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not your psychiatrist's office. Do not talk about your baby father. Do not talk about your drug addiction. Do not talk about rehab and all that other stuff on Facebook because you are the same people that get mad when people start talking about you. Where uh, I keep personal stuff to myself. Um, if you if you know me and if you have my phone number and you call me and somebody told you something happened, you probably, you're not gonna find out on Facebook. You'll find out by having a conversation with me. If you're in any type of business, um, trying to grow. Yeah, when you're selling something or you're promoting something. Advertising. You, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's free advertising, so why not take advantage of it? Like a lot of good people have, uh, you know, gotten a lot of press and been able to move on with their careers from these uh, particular institutions, social institutions, but I don't think when it comes to personalizing, like building relationships, building friendships, it's not the best way to go about it. Like, yo, if you're under 20, you go to school, you have a career ahead of you, like, like you're Spanish, like this. Like, you call yourself a promoter, but really what you're doing is just flooding my timeline with a bunch of nonsense, and I don't want to see it anymore. All right, so just stop. I have a lot of random thoughts and sometimes I just want to get them out and put them on Twitter. Not so people can read it, because I don't care if people read it or not, but just because I use myself. You got people on there talking about when they go into the bathroom or they baby daddy right. or the dime. It's like a three minute span and you got 15 posts. Bro, go do something. needs to be like every 30 seconds. Yeah, just go, go, go do something. They're like, do something that's gonna take five minutes. Like, if I'm at work sitting in the barber chair waiting for, waiting for my client, oh, he got here. <laughs> oh, he got here. Starting this haircut. Instagram makes like makes you put yourself in a rat race with people who you don't even know what their life is really like. Like, it's, sometimes it's just like really annoying. I think some things just need to be kept between your four walls, especially that nasty room.
or those dirty pictures with your bed not made, <laughs> underwear on the floor, all that kind of stuff, you need to keep that for your own house. Nobody wants to see that. It's not funny. It's disgusting because you come outside all dressed and dolled and your house is a mess. There's a lot of people that I, that I, that I encountered females on Instagram and I see them in real life, you like, yo, they look like Martin that, that got, when he got dropped, you know what I mean, by Tommy Hearns, you know what I mean? I just think people should just cut all the filters out, you don't look like that in real life, and keep it moving. For you to base your life off of what you see, like, on Instagram or, like, Twitter, it's just sad. I know who I am, I'm secure in the person that I am. Um, so if someone else is doing good and I see it on social media, congratulations to you, like I'm happy for you, but it doesn't affect my everyday life. Like I'm not gonna lose sleep over it, right. I'm not gonna be worried about it. Like congratulations, I'm happy for you. Right. I've seen that happen with people of all ages where you see people stunting on Instagram and you're just like, I thought everybody was broke like me. <laughs> I may have a little bit of moment like, oh man, like for two seconds and then for about eight and a half seconds I'll be like, you know what, I don't like you, like partially hate, like not too much hate, but like stir the hate pot just a little bit but not fully sip it. So for about eight and a half seconds I may hate and then for like another two minutes I'll just be like, look, you're not focused, you're not, your drive is not where it needs to be, you still don't have your plan together. So it, it almost like it's a catalyst for me. It pushes me to want to do better. I see people that I grew up with succeeding, it really gives me a push and a boost to really believe and know that I can do that too. And I love congratulating people that make it because when you can be sincere about other people making it in life and you can let them know that what they're doing is great and that you back them 100%, that will all come back to you in due time. All right, if you're doing that and you did that and you're being successful in it and that's the direction I want to go, this is a great learning and teaching opportunity for you and myself. Now, I got to work just as hard as they do. And I mean, they, they didn't get there just because. They, they got there because they worked hard. And I really love seeing people succeeding, especially young people and people that have been through adverse situations in life. You just got to work hard and do what you got to do to get where you want to be. Yeah. Don't always base your success off of someone else's because you might be taking two completely different paths. But I figured if we're moving at all, that's a plus. Because some people don't move. Like, I understand you're going uphill, but don't go back down. It doesn't really make me insecure, but it does prick me. Like, look, bro, get your stuff together. Focus, get your mind in order, figure out what you want to do, and let's get it moving. I know who I am, and I know what God has in store for me. So I'm not going to look at somebody else and, and, and be bitter on their life. You know what I mean? She got this, and I don't have this. Right. Like, okay, some people budget their money differently. Some mm -hmm. people do things differently. So it just depends on the person and your ethic and your drive to do what you want to do. Because Just because you're not like able to afford like a Rolex right now, it doesn't mean that you're not on the right track with what you're doing. I'm happy to see that they're actually doing something with themselves and not just sitting around and being lazy and you know what I mean, they're motivated. You happy so, for me? I'm very happy for you. I'm actually proud of you. I ain't even happy. I'm proud of you for real. Cause you, you came a long way and you're doing good. That's my barber by the way y'all. Cole Cuts, go see him. Cole, successful guy, can clip, you know what I mean? Holla at him. Cole Cuts on Instagram. And that's, that's like a role model for me. We'll talk. For so, real? Yeah. What? Oh my god, yeah, you. <laughs> it makes me more um, aware of the fear that I did not really recognize, or maybe I just didn't want to recognize that I had. But it does motivate me to want to do better. And, you know, get back on, like they say, get back on a horse and ride. Or do they say that? I think I just made that up too. So, I don't know. I have good intentions for everybody. I want to see everyone do well. Um, I definitely like to see fam family and friends do well because then that's less money I got to give you when you can't pay your phone bill.